many layers are present. This is extremely important for all of the topics you're going to discuss and learn about. The stratified, meaning two or more layers are present, protection, especially against abrasion. Hmm, what? What did I just do? I just caused an abrasion on my skin. Anything wrong? No. Because there are so many stratified layers that are present. It protected me against that abrasion. Doesn't mean that I didn't create a break, because I did. All right, I'm just hoping my immune system is strong enough to fight off whatever's trying to invade it right now. Squamous cells. Whenever you see squamous cells be present, these are the ones that are going to look like fried eggs. All right, they are good for allowing diffusion, the movement of particles, and or acting as filtration, such as what you're going to discuss in part two with the kidneys, for example. Our cubes and the columns. Cubes and columns are really good at secreting a substance, or they can be really good at absorption. When you talk about columnar cells, that you find the term or the cells present that are goblet cells, because that's what they do. They look like a wine goblet turned upside down. Those produce mucus. Now, hmm, what areas are? Nasal. Nasal, which would be a part of my respiratory. Anywhere else I find mucus? Digestive system. My digestive system. Anywhere else I find mucus? Urogenital. Every single one of these are openings to the outside environment. It is a function of the protection that our body will have against pathogens trying to invade us. When we talk about that free surface of these epithelial cells. The free surface can be smooth, help to reduce friction. On the free surface, it might be making up what we call microvilli. Do you guys remember those where I talked about in the digestive inside the intestines? All right, mainly because they are so good for helping absorb materials. Another place that we'll find the little projections, is something called stereocilia. This is what we're going to see in the ears. Now, you don't do special senses until part two, but the ears, the sense of hearing, love it. And then the part that comes with the equilibrium, oh, that's really cool. We might find cilia that are present. Woohoo! Woohoo! Doing the wave. All right. Good example. Respiratory system. Not only do I have epithelial cells, I've got the mucus that's being created, and now I have cilia that are present. And their job is to make sure that all this stuff that I'm breathing in, that if it makes it to a certain point in my respiratory system, that I go <coughs> and swallow it down so the acid in my stomach will kill it. 
so that it does not enter into my lung tissue. Enter it into the lung tissue, you're in trouble. We kill it, though, by smoking. Just saying. And I mean smoking anything. Okay? Anything. We can have this tissue make up folds, meaning it allows for certain organs of the body to change shape. A lot of you mentioned the stomach, all right? Think about the folds that are present there, okay? And then, of course, what we see with the urinary system and the bladder. When we begin to identify them, this would be a good example of simple squamous. Begin to take the terms apart. Simple, one layer. Squamous, they look like fried eggs. Can everybody see that? I can't really get this computer out, out of the way. Well, no matter what I do. Is that any better? Can you kind of? Okay. So, simple squamous. One layer, it's sitting on its basement membrane, and here is my connective tissue. One of the things that I mentioned about the epithelial tissue. It is avascular. If it's without vessels, how do these cells get what they need to live? In other words, how do they get nutrients? How do they get rid of waste? Cell to cell. All right, but we got to have a cell be able to get something to pass it to the next cell. So how are we going to get one of the cells? How are we going to get the cells? Extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid is present. That's meaning it's surrounding the cell. But what do these cells have a close relationship to that does have vessels. The connective tissue. The connective tissue. Because, wait a minute, what type of movement are these cells good at? Diffusion. Diffusion means movement of substances. So guess what? They may not have the blood supply, but the blood supply on the basement membrane on which they exist does. And they will allow movement of the substances. Is that why they have tunnels? Yes, those little red tunnels, good job, the little red tunnels are representing a blood vessel. So, what and where would these cells be of benefit? Lining of blood vessels. Hmm. Lining of lymphatic vessels. Huh. Keep that in mind. Small ducts, and I don't mean quack quack. Okay, D-U-C-T's, meaning a tunnel, all right? The alveoli of the lungs. Woo, because wait a minute, one of their jobs they could do was the diffusion of gases. That's the only thing the lungs do, move the gases, CO2 and O2. The loop of Henle and the kidney tubes for the waste, and the materials that either need to be 
pushed into waste or put back into the body. Lining of serous membranes around the organs of our body, for example. And the inner surface of the eardrum, the cerumen glands. What? Huh? Eardrum? Why? Why is that important? Why is that even mentioned? Is it, imp is it important to try to keep stuff out of the opening right there? Oh, yeah, because when you go to sleep at night, them little bugs will try to crawl in. Okay? Y'all ever see that Star Trek where the bug went in? And it kind of made the dude go crazy, you know? Y'all ever see that? And then it kind of... No. Okay, y'all got to look that up and look at it, okay? Y'all got to y'all got to YouTube that cuz it was really cool. Now, like we've already said, functions, diffusion, filtration, friction, uh, secretion, absorption. So there's a lot that these cells are very important in helping. Now, I think I broke it. I'm really good at doing that, aren't I? Yeah, oh, I don't care. It's showing up here. Okay, so simple cuboidal. So now, if I take my terms apart, we have identified how many layers? One. One. And what shape? Cube. The cube. Okay. Now, if I look at this, wait a minute. This is still a cell that is avascular. So once again, I look to my connective tissue for this blood supply because these cells are going to have their extracellular matrix which is going to help them maintain their homeostasis. So we're going to see these in the kidneys. We're going to have it in the choroid plexus of the brain and I hope that whoever y'all uh, take for part two really tells you about that part of the brain because it is so cool. It gives rise to cerebrospinal fluid. That's pretty cool, okay? Lining of bronchioles of the lungs and then surfaces of the ovaries. Single layer. Some might have microvilli. Some might have cilia. They are good for the secretion, the absorption, stuff that you'll see in the kidneys, secretion in the glands of that choroid plexus in the brain, movement of mucus out of those bronchioles. <coughs> How many of y'all caught? What triggers it? Well, mucus is going to be present. Sometimes we can have that overproduction, feel like we got to get it out, okay? Other times, under normal conditions, it's an irritant. Something has tried to make their way too far, and the lungs want to cough it back out. So, when you look at them under the scope, they look exactly like that. They look just like a cube. They're so cute, okay? Love the cube cells. And they're usually in just one layer. Simple columnar. How many layers? One. What shape? Columnar. The columns. They look like rectangles, all right? Once again, because the cells are avascular, but they have that extracellular fluid, they're on this connective tissue. They get their materials by the way of the diffusion. We're going to see these in some glands, bronchioles, auditory tubes, uterus, uterine tubes, stomach, intestines, gallbladder, bile ducts, ventri ventricles of the brain. Woo! Got them in quite a few places. Like I said, single layer of the columns, 
still help to move